those who served in Vietnam. At Arlington National Cemetery, President Reagan said Vietnam veterans fought a vicious war without enough support from home. Ceremonies at the Vietnam Memorial marked the addition of 110 new names. Men originally left off because they died outside the war zone. On Nightline tonight, in the states are holding primaries. I think Bob, Democratic Governor Bill Clinton, expected to win renomination. For former Governor Orville Fodder. Voters in Arkansas, Kentucky, and Idaho also will choose House candidates, and Kentucky Republicans will choose a candidate to try to run seat Senator Wendell Ford. And more people appear to be obeying the income tax law. Stephen Ogg with that story in this morning's economics. That's May 26, 1980. Six. Richard America is complying with the federal income tax laws. A new 6.30 a.m. Okay. Well, before 1982, the latest year's study. It was stolen. <laughs> Too often, Blackers get carried away with their god instincts. This active safety campaign is a reminder the river can be dangerous. Stop. Safety. The feds have come from Brazil down here. And uh, just, you know, wait and see is equal to everybody. You know, there's no difference to anybody. And Rick Mears, the fastest of the 33 qualifiers, isn't worried how the delay will affect him. You know, before I feel bad about people that come out, you know, the spectators and the fans come out to watch the race. And uh, a lot of my commitments, and they won't be able to get back to watch it. They'll be able to watch it. Mears will be able to drive in it Saturday. Perhaps by then, Indianapolis will dry out, and the fans will come back. And the West is going public. I think to raise about ten million dollars selling stock to the public for the first time. Investors hoping the stock price takes off as well. That's a look at the economy. Thank you, Stephen. Checking the foreign currency markets, the dollar closed down today against the Japanese yen. In Europe, the dollar opened up against the West German mark, the French franc, and the British pound. And I'm Joe London. It is Tuesday, May 27th. Wall Street where the smart and daring and lucky people can make money in the stock market. But what about people who use what's called inside information? This morning, the U.S. is going to continue for now to comply with the unratified SALT II arms treaty. The President Reagan says he's prepared. Prosecutors play an FBI tape said to be a few... Use what's called inside information. This morning, the U.S. is going to continue for now to comply with the unratified SALT II arms treaty. The President Reagan says he's prepared to exceed the treaty's limits soon unless the Soviets improve their own compliance record. Also this morning, prosecutors play an FBI tape said to be accused by Ronald Pelton's first contact with the Soviets. And the Soviet Union this morning pledges to allow 117 Soviet citizens to join their loved ones in the United States. Also, U.S. allies are urging Washington not to stress the SALT II arms control treaty as it is threatening to do. And Larry Bird had all the right moves if the Boston Celtics beat the Houston Rockets and take a 2-0 lead in the NBA Finals. From ABC News, this is Stephen Ogg. World News this morning for Friday, May 30th, 1986. It's 6.30 a.m. Now from our Washington News desk, Steve Bell and Jim Reserve sitting in for Kathleen Sullivan. Good morning, everyone. Last March, 10 contact, diatac, and telegram capsules in Orlando, Florida were found to contain cyanide. Early this morning in Los Angeles, FBI agents arrested a man named Edward Marks who allegedly tampered with those Florida capsules in hopes of making money by driving down the stock of drug maker Smith Klein. The poison capsules were found last March after a man called a number of media outlets, including ABC, and demanded that the products be taken off the market. It's now by 9 o'clock our time, Eastern time. It's not announced that if there's sign that already been sold out there and we want the client to find another way to pack it, totally take them off the shelves and repackage them, then they're going to have a lot more problems with a lot more people. That was the call last uh, March when that incident took place. Meanwhile, no more poison capsules have been found in Austin, Texas after the death of a young man last week from what were believed to be cyanide-laced Anison free capsules. Scientists were still testing the remaining Anison-3 capsules found in the dead man's apartment in Texas. 
In other news, America's NATO allies are unanimously urging the U.S. not to scrap the Salt II Arms Control Treaty. The magazine was careless and negligent in charging Sharon with complicity in a refugee camp massacre in Lebanon, but not malicious. The long and the short is we lost some battles, but we won the war, and that's what we were here for. Well, Sharon brought the same case in Israel where the law is different. And last January, Tan formally apologized to Sharon and agreed to pay a hefty undisclosed sum so be for Sharon's legal costs. I read it every day. A year ago, we looked at USA Today, the giant Gannett company's attempt to market a daily national paper produced by satellite across America to an audience shaped by television. Short stories, flashy graphics, lots of color. Latest circulation figures show that USA Today now has a daily circulation of more than 1.4 million making it second only to the Wall Street Journal in daily circulation. It's still losing money, about $50 million this year, but expects to start making money by the end of 1987. 1988 is on the mind of Pat Robertson, who heads the Christian Broadcasting Network. This well-known TV evangelist is seriously considering a bid for the Republican presidential nomination. Let me ask you here in Michigan, should I do it or should I not? And this week in Michigan, where the delegate selection process is already in its first stages, Robertson's supporters showed surprising strength. He'll decide next year on whether to make a real run for the White House. Thought about this election campaign, last March, Cleveland, Ohio, threw a giant day and night long bash in an effort to become the home 50s. Well, on May 5th, Cleveland got the nod. A badly needed civic boost for a much maligned city. Finally, the biggest media story of all a year and a half ago was Bernard Getz. New York's so-called subway vigilante who gunned down four youths at the end of 1984. Was he a hero or a menace? I don't know. No. What do, what do I stand for? Manhattan's district attorney got gets indicted on attempted murder charges, but a New York court threw that indictment out. That dismissal is now on appeal. Meanwhile, one of Getz's victims remains paralyzed, probably for life, while the other three are in custody on charges in unrelated cases ranging from robbery to rape. It is troublesome to think back on all the stories that made big news a few months or years ago and realize how little we've heard about them since. Are there still boat people fleeing Vietnam? Are there still death squads in El Salvador? What happened to all those auto and steel workers who lost their jobs free and right to dismiss these stories as yesterday's news if the conditions and the people are still with us today? Jeff Greenfield, ABC News. One other media note, AP and UPI wire services have agreed to change the way they spell Colonel Muammar Gaddafi's name. From now on, it'll be Gaddafi, G-A-D-A-K-F-I. There are more than a dozen ways it's spelled as people try to translate it from Arabic, but that's the way it was typed in English under Gaddafi's signature in a letter he wrote recently. So if that's the way he wants it, that's the way the wires will print it. Coming up next, the Indianapolis 500 becomes a five-mile sprint.